Okay, going over the oil cooler, I already have the intake removed. Um, I figured that we'll go over the intake removal is pretty much straightforward. Um, I didn't remove the fan because a lot of guys don't have the wrench to do the fan uh, to, um, to take it off at home. So we'll, we'll go ahead and do it this way just to show you. But again, the intake is pretty straightforward. We're, gonna, we're going to be going after the oil cooler. The oil cooler now is serviced as a, um, they, they just fill, do the heat exchanger here. This is the internal part of the oil cooler. I'll show how to do this. But as we're going, I wanted to go over a few things first. And this is really important. Um, again, depending on the climate where you live uh, on your oil cooler, you want to make sure you, you get a lot of dust and dirt um, in between your front cover here and the oil cooler housing and, and all along the back side. You want to make sure you blow that out. Then when, and the reason why I'm doing that, I'll get a lot from um, the do-it-yourselfers or independent shops that did not know about that, and, and it'll come and plugged up. This is a screen to the front of the IPR. The IPR valve, it's back here. It's, it's what it creates the oil pressure or your injection pressure. The, um, this is the screen that's through there. As you can see, it's not very large. If, if we just put a teaspoon of dirt, it'll, and uh, eventually all your oil will pass through this, through this screen, through this filter. And um, it doesn't take much to plug, up, to plug this up. And once this even gets, starts to get restricted, it'll, um, your truck's going to stop. You're going to have a no start. You're going to have a lack of power um, as it plugs up. I've seen them plug up in a matter of a few minutes, and I've seen them take 2,000 miles depending on how much dirt's uh, been inside there. And one of the main questions I always ask when I see this plug is, has it been worked on? It's normally not the injectors. You can't get enough from there. It's almost always they had an oil cooler worked on. So blow it all out. First, I'll take something, I'll, I'll scrape along the edges here, and then I'll blow it back. And um, another thing too, your turbo drain back tube. I put that back inside there so I'm not blowing everything back down inside the oil. So anyhow, that's, that's my uh, pointer there. And once I get the oil cooler off, I'll show you an uh, easier way to get this apart and do it. Okay, I'm going to go over a few of the highlights of things that have to be removed to get the uh, oil cooler off of there. Um, some of the things I want to point out, this whole cavity inside here is full of oil. So when we lift it off, oil is going to leak. So put some rags down here just so it doesn't go down the back of your valley and stain your uh, driveway, garage, or shop, wherever you're at. So I've taken the bolts out of the, to uh, out of the top of the cooler. Um, there's, there's a Torx 40s and a, uh, the Torx 30s on there. So we, we take them, we're going to take off the top here, remove that. The ne next what we're going to do here, the, the nipple, this elbow for your, um, this is where the water flows, water flows through your, your oil cooler into your EGR cooler. That's also why when your oil cooler becomes restricted, why your EGR cooler fails. Your water's coming in here, it's going out here, going through the EGR cooler, cooling down the exhaust gases, and when it gets restricted, when an oil cooler gets restricted, it's not the oil passages that gets restricted because the oil's not flowing through it. It's that the water, the water is flowing through here, and this is submerged inside of a, uh, a reservoir of oil inside there and as the water flows through here it, it, it cools down the oil that's all surrounding it kind of like, like ice cube would do in a glass of water um, this is cooling down the oil that's all around it all inside this cavity so anyhow it's actually the water passages that plug up and then this nipple has to come off here so I just find it best if I can get underneath it here pry it up and then get on the back side and get it out and we have it then we're going to remove all the, uh, the bolts on the... Uh... Okay, we got the... Uh... Again, remember, it's going to leak. So normally I'll just lift it up. Then underneath here is the part there that we're talking about. I'm gonna let this drain for a second, then I'll we'll go through and show how to replace that part, give you a couple of little uh, tips with it. Okay, we have the oil cooler off. Uh, 
we're going to go ahead and disassemble it here maybe show you guys a few pointers on on what to do what to expect we'll loosen it up here Okay, we take the four bolts out. It is two underneath. We have the bolts, and you have two nuts on top here that holds it down. And the best way I've found to get them out of here is I'll just take a couple four, two by fours, and we'll, we'll pound it out of here. The two by fours, you know, suspend the housing, let that drop. On this front one here, we want something that's smaller than the diameter of this. That's, that's the washer is. So anyhow, we take it, we just tap on it, and it's out. So that makes it a, a lot easier. I've seen guys try to pry and get it out. You end up breaking the housing, um, end up with more problems. So now that we have this, we'll take our new cooler here and put the O-rings on. This, you have two different sizes. Uh, as far as the, the, the seal here, uh, to me, I put the uh, smaller ones on it first, makes it so covers that. Okay. We have the housing here. If you have an old four or five or above, pretty much any of them but the old threes, you need to transfer. Or if you're not using a different housing, uh, there's a seal inside here. I've never had a problem with it, but they do give it to you in the kit. So you want to replace it. Take the seal off. Yeah, another thing I do here, if you have some assembly lube or grease, peanut butter, whatever, take it and uh, we'll put a little bit inside of the housing here to help hold the seals as we go back together. Okay, now there's two, there's two sizes of O-rings that come in the kit that's pretty close. The smaller one's going to go on here, and the best way to tell is if you try to put the smaller one inside there, you see that it doesn't fit. The one that's just a little bit larger will fit inside there a lot cleaner. And also, also as you do this, you want to make sure that the flush, because if you don't, if you have one and you pinch it, you're going to have a uh, intermix of your oil and your coolant here. So we'll go ahead and do that. Lubricate all these. Once we have all lubricated, put that in, make sure it's good. Another thing I like to do is I'm going to be pushing onto this housing so I'll kind of make sure my seals aren't going to want to come out. Don't want any regrets after I do it. So after testing it a few times, it stays together pretty much where we know we have it. So that's good. Put some lubrication on there. I have it. And if you push it down straight and square, focusing on the resistance, of course, are going to be on these O-rings, so I focus on that area. push it together now we just got to bolt it up and this part's done ready to go back on the vehicle and let me show you something on the vehicle what I another area to pay attention to okay I have the um, 
oil cooler put back together. I went ahead and bolted it down, torqued the bolts down, got it all tight, put in the seal here. When you have the seal in, you want to make sure it's all the way seated and that you don't have it rolled anyway. Sometimes if you push it down to the left and to the right, you can actually get to where the seal would roll and that gives a passage for the oil to go through. So anyhow, we have the, uh, the seal all in, oil cooler all torqued, it's ready to be put on. A um, few things you want to do before that, you have the sump there where the oil cooler sits inside the engine. It's full of oil. Take a little bit of the oil out. I've seen people want to take it, drain it all the way, and then clean it out. That's up to you. If you want to do that, you can. To me, I didn't contaminate it, so I'm not worried about it. But that's your own preference, your vehicle, your time. Do it. Now, this is also common. You see it with a little bit of the contamination on the filter and the screen, and you'll also see it torn. Um, this screen has been revised. I'm not seeing any of the new ones coming back torn. But the uh, again, it's common to see it torn like that. Don't panic. A little bit of a contamination in there. Don't worry about it. Obviously, if it's really contaminated or you have metal in there, uh, then worry about it. And then the other the other thing I want to just point out: these have blind holes, and when we took, when we lifted up the oil cooler, all the oil from the cavity filled them up, and so you don't get a false torque. I like to blow them out. Pretty much now that we have the, uh, the ceiling surface, the mating surface, it's all clean. No problems there. The holes are all blown out, so I'm not going to have a false torque or a uh, have it want a hydraulic on me. We'll go ahead and put the uh, ore cooler down and torque it down. And pretty much that's the only tricks on doing the ore cooler.